Hello everyone. Let's talk about getting into Linux kernel after 30 years. So every sure, everyone must know that it has been uh, 30, uh, 31st or 2nd anniversary of the Linux kernel. So even if it is a so old software, so it is still relevant and everyone is still using it. That's why we are all here. So I am Usama and I work for Colabra. So today I will enlist some resources which can be used to become a Linux kernel developer and anyone can use those in any order to get even a job. So I will even show some examples. Let's get started. So if we look at the evolution of the Linux, so it started from only one developer and today it has 25,000 developers so which have contributed to the upstream. And there are still a lot of downstream developers and they just keep on adding it. And now we have, from 2008, we have jumped from 9 million lines of code to 34 million lines of code. So it shows how fast it's still going on. The development is still continuing. And there's still room. And there are a lot of uh, jobs which are still vacant just because people don't have the skills to work on it. And they have no expertise at all. And even the people want to get into it, but they are afraid. So it, it must be very difficult because the, even the software is all, uh, it may be more difficult and also the development because it is all open source. So people think that it may be a very difficult task, but, but let me explain a bit. So if we look at who develops Linux kernel, so there are a lot of people. So there are some categories. For example, first of all, some companies develop it. For example, vendors like Intel, Samsung who have their hardware. So they need to support Linux on that just, just because Linux is the best operating system out there right now. And even it, it, it runs on everything from smaller devices to the supercomputers and satellites. So, and there are some other users as well, like Google and other, a lot of tons of companies who use this uh, to like create some cloud or something and earn a lot of money from it because anybody can use it. And there are a lot of consultancy companies as well. So like Colabra, so they help them to get some upstreaming or they need some help with anything. So we, uh, those consultancies help others as well. And, and, and not, just, not just the companies, there are a lot of research institutes as well. For example, uh, if someone wants to develop some new algorithm, someone wants to study the history that how algorithms would, abort, uh, would evolve. So, so they would select Linux because it is all open source. You can do whatever want, you want, and then you can even get some support from others as well. And it is quite a nice code base where you can develop your algorithms and it can help not only you, but others as well. And, and finally, there are hobbies who just get some hardware from somewhere and it doesn't work at all. So they try to just make it work on Linux and they submit their work as well. And what are the main difficulties uh, of, of this code base? So the first problem is that there is only very few documentation out there. And even if there is some documentation, it gets outdated very soon because it keeps on getting evolving. People submit patches all the time. And if we look at the patch submission rate or even application rate, so it, it, it is about more than 10 change sets per hour. So that's a lot. So, so that's why even if someone documents something, so it will get outdated very soon. So, and even some components are very old because like block devices were designed 20 years ago, there were only hard, hard drives. And now, you know, there are tons of different kinds of storage devices. So it, it keeps, it, we need to keep it alive and we need to keep updating our code. Okay, let's start. So this is the best course out there. So everyone should do it. So it is very easy to do as well. So this is a free course from Linux Foundation. So it is a beginner's guide to Linux kernel development. So it is not difficult at all. So you start from zero. And it tells you all about the development processes, how release happens, how you need to submit patches. And even it, it, it asks you to, do, to build the kernel and then install in the system. So it's up to you how you want to do it, but it's the most easiest way and anybody can do it. And it's also enlist some other resources which you, which you can use. So, so anybody who is even somewhat interested, so this course is the way to go. And, 
and there are other courses as well. So these are also free courses from Linux Foundation, but these are for the ones who really don't know anything at all. So you can select which course you want to take, but uh, they are not necessary. It depends upon your experience. If you want to take, you should. Then Linux Foundation has some paid instructor-led trainings. So these are also very good. So, but they are paid and they're kind of expensive. So that's why for those who cannot pay, so there, are, there is a scholarship, uh, which is Shubhakar Linux Foundation Training Scholarship. So you can take one, if you get selected, definitely you can select one course and you can do it. So this is the best way to even get the, a paid course. So this is all thanks to Linux Foundation. And moving on, so there is this Linux kernel mentorship program. Uh, so in this program, uh, there are a bunch of diff different uh, programs. For example, there may be a bug fixing program where you will only be working on the bug fixes. And there may be a program about some specific component where you will develop something. Maybe there is some recently added API which you need to improve further or maybe something else. So, and there are, the application process is also very interactive. So it's like you will fill in, a, fill in a, your details, and there will be a, a list of the tasks so you, which you need to do. So these tasks will range from installing the kernel and then submitting some patches. So they, they also they have some, some guide on it, how to submit the patches. But the first course will really help you here as well. So you need to submit them, and then, in, then it is a process by which you apply. And then if you get selected, so you get a training uh, mentorship with, for three months. And usually the mentors are very experienced. So you already know that, oh, so you are working with that guy. So that, this really helps. And in that three months, those will be the most golden months I would consider. So you, can, you will be working with the community. And a guy who is very well versed will be helping you. So this is the best program out there. But there is only one take is that so they, they accept only a few, I would say. So maybe they should increase their intake as well. And then there is outreach internship as well. As well. So that internship uh, is for more, it is geared toward more under depressed people in tech. And they have also very interactive kind of application phase. And then you work with a mentor. And, but the, this is the, the, it is only a full-time program, so Linux. Uh, mentorship program was, uh, it can be taken in full-time or part-time, but this one is only for full-time people. Then there is an ancient resource. It, it, it used to call uh, Eductula Challenge. So it has 20 challenges, which you can solve them uh, by sending emails. And there is some bot or maybe some guy who replies to you so if your answer is correct or wrong. So it, it is the it has some very good challenges from, it starts from creating some modules, and it helps you through as well. So, but, but unfortunately, it is not accepting application right now. But you can find the questions online and try to do it by yourself. And uh, definitely, it would help you a lot, because uh, it is like a ladder. So, so you start uh, climbing the ladder from one, one end. So definitely, you will reach somewhere above. And if you are bored and you don't know what to do, you're stuck somewhere, there are IRC channels and uh, mailing list as well. So this is specifically for beginners and newbies so that you can, they can ask anything. And the people, a lot of people are there, and they definitely will you give some pointer. So that pointer will really help you, and you will not get discouraged at all. And this uh, kernelnewbies.org has uh, tons of different several blogs for newbies. So the most. Uh, the best blog of, uh, on their website is this first kernel patch and patch philosophy blog. So you must read it. So it is very good, uh, and it, it will really help you out. And secondly, and the most uh, the thing uh, by uh, at which you should be brave is that you should join the Linux kernel mailing list uh, just when you start uh, the, your journey, so that you know what's going on there, what people are talking about, how. Uh, what kind of things happen there. So you should start and at least start reading some, some of the emails so that you know how a community works. And sometimes the conversations are heated up there. So just don't, uh, don't get 
get afraid from there and be polite and don't, don't ever take things personally. Uh, then there are some uh, a lot of different websites like uh, LWN is the best out there. It gives you news about tons of different things. For example, wh what is happening, what what kind of components, uh, what kind of how the merge window has gone. So if if, if you don't know what the merge window uh, is, so you so it is if you if you will study the process in the first course, you will know that merge window is how the maintainer sent code to the Linus to add it to the next release. Uh, so it, this following it is also good, so you, that you have some overview that what's going on, uh, what what phase it of the development is it, and and what how and that, that will give you some uh, information as well. And then uh, there are a lot of different developers who have maintained their own blog. So uh, this planet.kernel.org has a list of people. Uh, so you can start reading the blog. So those blogs range from how to debug some issues, how you can be good at some blogging, debugging, and, and so on. And if you are working on something like you don't know about the component at all, so you can also search for any presentation uh, like this one or there are other conferences as well, like Linux Plumbers. So those presentations are very helpful in give, giving you the initial overview, which can help you uh, a bit in the start, and then you can just go from there. And the best thing for beginners is this LF Live mentorship series. So it is a very uh, recent initiative uh, by Linux Foundation again. Uh, so it, it hosts some virtual mentoring series, and it, which provides some extra knowledge and discussion over zoom to people so they what do uh, they call the uh, uh, superly amazing people there so they are very well versed and even they had developed some the same components so that's why they know everything there so they share their experience from beginner's perspective so they start from zero and they tell you that from where you should start where you should study and how you can take things from there and the most amazing talks i have shared here like there, there was a session from Greg and on how to submit patches. There is Miguel's sessions there, how to get started in Rust. And there was a session which I really enjoyed. It was an introduction to, to Linux, tracing and its concepts by Elena and, and so on. So this resource will really help you uh, in understanding things from the beginner's perspective. Because sometimes, even if there is some documentation, so that documentation is very evolved version uh, of the original design. So even if we study it, you will never understand what's going on. So if you have some perspective from beginners that how, what was the initial feature and how it got developed, so that, that makes things very easier. So there are tons of talks about it, I guess more than 10 or 15. So those are very helpful, so th those uh, should be attending. Uh, and finally, after doing all this, uh, there may be sometimes there are some sometimes when you don't even find anything. There is no presentation, video, and anything at all. And, and but there are, is some documentation, and so you should start again from there. That uh, maybe some documentation is in kernel's tree, or maybe some maintainer has written a blog. Uh, so that should be helpful. And there is a very good book. Uh, from some jo Jonathan, so it is LDD. It is near LDD three, so it, its version is three. But it was again written very uh, several years ago. So it it was written on version two point six, and now version six dot six dot is going to be released very soon. So, but this book will give you. Uh, this book was written when features were very uh, simplified. So this book will give you overview how the uh, Linux was designed. For so, so so this book can be skimmed if someone wants to write device drivers. So it will give you some simplified version of what we have today in the Linux. And there are some other good books as well, uh, but that that is based on the topic and your interest. So that can be found out from by, by just searching. And finally, if you 
don't have anything at all, then you should just be brave and, and start reading the code. So even if it is C language or something, you will start to understand if you spend some time. And, and then if you are still interested, you should start writing the code to learn different drivers or something. So it is, it is very easier to buy some uh, embedded board, or even you, you, can learn, uh, you can install Linux on your own laptop in a VM or maybe natively. So that, and then you can develop some code there. So this will really help you in understanding things, and you will get st start, uh, start getting some experience. And finally, so once you know uh, all the processes and everything, you should start finding the component of your interest. Uh, so it, it can range from anything. So there are tons of different components. Just start anywhere which interests you. And, and if, if you are still not confident enough, you don't know what to do, or you don't know how to understand a Bing component, and you don't want to attempt that before getting more confidence, then there are some easier way to contribute to the Linux kernel, which will make your interest uh, grow. So the first thing is that there is a check batch uh, script, which you can uh, run on Linux kernels directories or some specific file to find some warnings there. So you should start, it is, it is sometimes easier to fix the warning, just find the warning and fix it. And there are some static analyzers which you can use to find the bug and then fix them as well. So this is also very interesting uh, because it is good to start from there because uh, you visit the code base several times, you build it several times just to see if bug has been fixed or not. So this gives start giving you confidence. So there are, some static analyzers. For example, sparse is the Linux kernel's own static analyzer. So it is very easier to run sparse just by giving a flag to the make command. So it, it, it becomes very easier to just run it. And, and second st static analyzer is smatch. So uh, smatch is a, a separate tool. So you need to install it and then uh, run it on your own laptop. Uh, so, but some, someone may say that, oh, so I, I cannot spend four, eight hours just on uh, analyzing the code and then find the bug and fix it. So there is another one. So Quarity is the last one, uh, is the third one from many others. So it is, although it is a proprietary, so it has a web interface and even sends you the emails of the probable bugs if it has found in the recent code. So you can just go through all the possible things which it has mentioned and just try to fix things. So one thing to keep in mind is that static analyzers report a lot of things which are not even bugs at all. So you should be very careful in finding which is the false positive and which is the false negative. So, but, but just don't worry. If you think it is a bug, then probably it would be. So just try to send and people will let you know that, oh, it is not a bug. Uh, and just be, don't, don't be shy at all. So I, I will just remember that how I had submitted my first patch. So it was a false, neg uh, false negative. It was not a bug at all. And I submitted it and I felt, oh, so what I have done. But that was the barrier, right? So once that was broken, then I was more open and I, I felt more confident there. So it is OK to make some mistake, but just be polite. If someone says that, oh, no, it is not a bug, so just, uh, just don't be sad about it. OK, so there are some difficult bugs as well. For example, Google has this SysBot. It is a f system call fuzzer. So it, it, it just fires off tons of different syscalls and ioctals, and it finds some crash. If there is some crash, it will try to reproduce it, and it will generate an email that maybe these, these syscalls were executed, and, and this bug got hit, so kernel got crashed. So, so it will just generate a report. Uh, sometimes it has a reproducer as well. Sometimes the reproducer is not there. So you just, you just run that, find, that, find the, that mail, and try to debug the code from there. And it takes, as compared to the static analyzer bug, so it takes quite some time to uh, see what's going on. Because the code is running, you need to check all the different loops. Uh, so, but this, this also gives you good practice about uh, how the debug, debug, you can do, debug the kernel, and how kernel runs as well. Uh, now, I'm just at the end of the talk, and I want to share some examples. Oh, 
Okay, so these are the some examples by which you can be a Linux kernel full-time developer. So if you just start contributing upstream, so it is the most easiest way, and I would say the difficult one because uh, so you can get a full-time job. So this would usually happen in the last, I would say, all the 30 years. Uh, this is the most common way to become a developer. And but now this is modern times, and people uh, there are easier way. For example, you can get some internship. For example, it can be outreachy or maybe mentorship program, and then it it becomes very easier to get the job after those. The, uh, that, that internship, and and then there are some people who have some closed source experience, and then they want to switch to the Linux kernel, so they just uh, start learning, just like I have told you from the courses, from the LF mentorship series, and then there are some analyzers, fixing some analyzer bugs, and then they finally they get a job, right? So there are several examples where people have got into Colabra, Intel, Canonical, and several other companies which I don't even know. So, so you just start doing something and you will reach there. And definitely we are hiring. So once you get somewhere, so you should definitely try applying to us and hopefully uh, you will be one, uh, one of our collab collaborants someday. And thank you. If, if anybody has any questions, so you can ask now or maybe catch me later. Okay. Uh, definitely, you can if you st if you have some skills, so you can get hired without any degree. So nobody looks at your degree when you have some something to show that you have the skills and you have been contributed. So that so making some contributions before applying that is the best thing to do. So that would make your chances higher. Uh, so it's up to you. Just start doing now, and you will get the job. Even I guess Collabra has several people who have not even completed. Uh, their degrees maybe, or maybe they are working even before completing their degrees. So it's up to your, your contributions. There's also a virtual question. Could you talk about the mentorship program, please? I'm really interested. Is it virtual? OK. Uh, so they have a website, uh, LFX Mentorship by Linux Foundation, and that has all the details. So I. I'm not sure, I've not checked recently if they have some open uh, mentorship pro apl applications process right now, uh, but you should ch start checking it and then just try to apply. So the process is very simple. And they also have some wiki with all the smaller details. And, and, and the most important thing is that, so mentorship can be your shortcut, uh, and you can just complete that, learn, a lot of different things at a very high pace. But if even if you don't get there, just start doing things like I have explained other things. For example, start from that initial course, then, then watch uh, LF Live, and then start contributing. So mentorship is just a kind of a shortcut. It's my personal thinking. Is there any other question? Okay, thank you so very much. Thank you very much.